What's going on guys? It's Greg from East Coast Eyes. Today we're bringing back Theory Thursday to talk about Vortex Mesh. So we've been fielding tons of questions and uh, today we're gonna drop some knowledge on you, talk about how you can string it, some ideas, and answer some of the frequently asked questions. So this one might get a little long, so grab a snack, settle in, it should be fun. So when we developed Vortex, the main idea when we were thinking about stringing, what really makes it different is that you can string the top string, the shooting strings, your sidewall patterns, uh, all exactly the same, all the same knots, so you don't have to learn any new techniques. So we were able to increase performance significantly without having to totally rework uh, the stringing game and try and think of all these new stringing techniques. So that was the big push behind it. That being said, there are some things you have to think about when you're stringing the Vortex as compared to regular standard 10 diamond mesh. So um, let's take scenario number one. You have Hero Mesh or any other regular 10 diamond mesh. You really like the pocket you have in your stick, and now you want to try out Vortex Mesh because it seems interesting. Great, I think you really like it. What you're gonna to want to do, maybe as like priority number one, is take the same exact pattern you had in your 10D stick and just string it up exactly like that with the Vortex. And that's a lot of what we did while we were testing it. And this is a Mirage uh, that I strung with the same exact pattern I was using with Hero Mesh and it worked really well. So what you're gonna get here if you use the same exact pattern shooting strings is a pocket that's shifted slightly more up in the head and a pocket that just has slightly more whip uh, because it's gonna grab in that sweet spot and grab the ball just a little better. So you can get a lot more hold, a lot more accuracy and control, but it's gonna come with just a slight shift up in pocket placement and also slightly more whip. Uh, so when you string it, test it out, use your same exact pattern, see how you like it, and then from there, there's a couple adjustments you can make uh, if you're not really feeling it. So number one, you can adjust the shooting strings. So if this pocket had a little bit too much whip for me, I'd probably take one shooting string away and bump them up a row to the nine diamonds just to make it a little bit smoother. You can always shallow your pocket up a little bit or if it shifts a little too high for you, uh, just move a knot down and move a one and a two a little bit lower in the pattern and that should shift it right back down to where you like it. So, you know, if you really don't, want to change up too much, you don't have to. You can string the same exact pattern, and I think it's going to work out really well for most of you guys. Now, that being said, uh, if you're looking to try something new, something different, uh, we have developed a whole bunch of patterns that we're going to be putting out soon on Instagram. Uh, you can follow us at ECBLAX. We have tons of the most popular heads, and we're showing them all but the Vortex with a recommended pattern. And so basically, what this consists of is a whole lot of SIs. If you need help string that knot, just search how to string an SI on YouTube, boom, my face will pop up and we'll teach you how to do it. Really simple knot. And what all the SIs down the side do is keeps the mesh really flat, really consistent, really smooth, which works really well with the Vortex to get all the hold out of the Vortex uh, diamond placement, but also create that really smooth channel and that really smooth release. And for this, the shooting string setup we're recommending is a nine diamond nylon and a nine diamond straight shooting string. So we've got straight SIs down the side, a couple skips, then a nice bunching, no stacked SIs here, and it's really smooth, really nice. So this is kind of what we're generally recommending if you don't know what you want. And if you want it to be a little deeper, a little more defined, you can always toss a stacked SI in the middle there. It does work really well with this mesh. So now we're gonna talk about some of what you probably should stay away from with the Vortex mesh. Uh, and one thing is ultra tight channels. I know our buddy T-Bird, he loves channels that are like crazy tight, he pulls, the the knots all the way down to like two-thirds down the head and the channel feels like the ball will barely get out of it this works pretty well for him for regular hero mesh i don't think a channel that is like crazy crazy tight is going to work all that well for vortex mesh because combined with that natural diamond transition it's just going to get caught a little bit and the same thing goes with creating an ultra defined pocket if you're someone that likes to do like two stacked si's right in a row or do like two double ups right in a row and have that really defined pocket uh, the same thing goes, you might get a little bit too much hook out of the Vortex and standard 10D might just be for you, you know. It is just another preference option and, you know, a lot of people are still going to like the standard 10D mesh and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and the last thing is really tight or really low shooting strings. Uh, so that's going to kind of get in the way of where the natural sweet spot is for the Vortex and going to make it whip a little bit. So those are three things, ultra tight channel, ultra defined pocket and low shooting strings we probably avoid when using the Vortex mesh. 
So now I want to do a couple frequently asked questions about the Vortex. Again, if you guys ever have any questions, you can get at us on Instagram, leave some comments, we'll reply to you. Email us, sales at eastcoastdies.com. Uh, reply here, we'll reply to all these as well, or you can call us too. Uh, we'll answer any questions you have about the Vortex. But one big question we've got is how is it for face-offs? And this is something we're still in the process of testing. We don't claim to be face-off experts, we definitely aren't. I know a couple guys, Josh, you know, he's trying to learn how to face-off, but still definitely not an expert. But we have talked to the expert, Greg Renlian, pretty much the leading expert on face-offs in the world. Uh, he got back to me with some early feedback. It was brief. All he said was, I love it. So I'm going to try and collect some more from him and some other guys like Jerry Ragonese as well and get some detailed feedback for you guys on how it works. But conceptually, it seems like it would be really great. It makes the pocket a little softer within that, that sweet spot, that channel area, which is nice. And then the sweet spot might actually grab the ball a little bit better because of the diamond transition, you know, when you go to grab it and pull it out. So right now the feedback from the best in the world is he loves it and I'll try and get you guys some more details on that. Uh, another question we've got a lot is can you string it upside down? And so the cool thing about Vortex is it was the first piece of mesh really in a long time to be designed with a specific top and a bottom. So most standard tendy mesh you can flip it either way you want and that would just change whether you had nine diamonds or ten diamonds on the top or bottom. This, you know, we designed it to be strung very specifically with the standard diamonds at the top and the large ones at the bottom. That being said, you can flip it. And there's a company out of uh, Detroit called Stinson Meller that loves flipping it and they're really liking the benefits there. So I have one here that I strung flipped. Um, I actually cut a row off as well to move it a little bit. But basically what this does is it puts the small diamonds at the bottom. And what that's gonna do is gonna push the ball a little bit further up in the pocket. Um, and it's going to just kind of get it right in those diamonds and you're never going to get the transition. It's going to stay large diamonds all the way through, which gives it a really unique feel and really smooth. Uh, we haven't messed around with this too much, but it does string up really, really easily. So it's something if you guys want to try that you definitely can do. Another question we've gotten a lot is can you string a high pocket with the Vortex? And the short answer is yes, obviously you can. So option number one is to take the Vortex just as it is, string up a high pocket pattern. So maybe you put some double ups. Uh, up at the top here, like I mentioned, Vortex is naturally going to shift a little higher, so that'll help you out. And if you string up a higher pocket, the ball is going to sit right at the very top of that transition pretty much all the time. If you find that's not really working for you that well, what you can do is cut a half row off the top of the mesh or just fold it straight down to the second nine diamond set. And just like that, what that's going to do is move the sweet spot, the transition point up in the pocket. So you're gonna get the transition point rather than sitting like right here, it's actually gonna sit up here and it's gonna allow the ball to ride up a lot higher, move the sweet spot up in the head and give you a really cool feel. So with the length of the mesh, you probably have you know two rows of diamonds to play with down at the bottom that you could cut off at the top and shift it up that you can move it up really, really high if you want, which could be cool. And the final question we get is, is Vortex good for defense? And the answer here is an emphatic yes. All the defensive heads now are crazy wide and it's almost impossible for us to string a great channel and still maintain a high pocket. With the Vortex, you can string a good channel, uh, you can string a nice mid pocket that'll shift up a little high, uh, but that central diamond transition, that channel you get, that hole you get from the Vortex is gonna be really essential when your head is like a shovel and you need some extra hold and a little extra whip for long clearing passes to keep it in there. So I would recommend Vortex to pretty much every defenseman out there because with those wide heads, you just need more hold for carrying the ball up the field. So that concludes the string theory for Vortex. We actually have uh, Mainly Mesh who came in and talked some theories, so make sure to keep your eyes peeled uh, to YouTube for that. Leave any questions you have down in the comments. Like this if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't, and have a great day.